Hi everyone, Pierre from Into Fly Fishing and welcome to another River Fly Fishing tutorial. In this tutorial we'll be showing you exactly how to cast a Euro Nymphing rig. It's something that looks very easy and it surely is but there's a couple of very key aspects that you need to keep in mind. This video is brought to you by Moonshine Rod Company and Snowbee. For this video I'm fishing the Moonshine Epiphany 10 foot 4 inch 2 weight which is really an ideal rod for this kind of size of river and for the intended application that we'll be going to test it with. I'm also wearing the Snowby Prestige STX breathable waders and the Snowby fishing vest that has an integrated backpack. Before we dive into this video it's important to understand how the leader or uranymphing leader impacts the way that we fish and we cast. We've already done a video on that you can find the link to it in the description down below. But just to give you a full rundown of the rig that I'm using from the end of my fly line to the end of my last fly is about 20 feet in length. That's double the length of this rod, which is a 10 foot or a 10 foot 4 inch fly rod. Now the main part of my leader is built using 2X, so that's attached to the end of my fly line. That's about 12 feet of 2X and right at the end of that I attach the tippet ring. So you'll notice that I don't fish a piece of bar color or strike indicator material on this specific rig. That's because it's very bright outside, the fish have been been hammered quite hard during the season and they don't respond well to that brightly colored piece of line. So I'm trying to just rely on the tension and the rod sensitivity to detect the takes. The two flies that I'm using is a three and a half millimeter tungsten mayfly with CDC nymph right at the bottom. That will give me enough tension to detect the takes and about 50 centimeters, that's about two feet up from that, I have a much smaller mayfly with a two and a half millimeter bead. So that's the rig that I'm using, the flies that we're going to fish. So let's see if we can catch a couple of fish. We've now come to this perfect little run. There's a nice little bubble line and we're going to fish on either side of it through the bubble line. It's quite deep, so the fish are probably holding on the bottom of that as you can't really see on the bottom. So this is an ideal little run to target with uranymphing. So now to the basics of casting a uranymphing rig. In essence, there's no difference between casting a uranymphing rig and casting a normal fly line. Two key differences here to keep in mind and that will cause you trouble is the very thin leader that you're using and the extremely heavy flies. This can be seen as a negative, yes, because if you don't adapt certain things during your casting stroke, it might create some headaches, but the weight and the um, thin diameter of this leader is also on your side and that, that's why we're using it is to fish effectively to the fish at the bottom of the of the run. So let me first show you what happens if you use your standard casting stroke as you would with a normal like a nine foot leader and a, and a full fly line out or a piece of fly line out. So what we would do is we'd go back and stop hard and if when we come forward we try and keep the rod tip in a straight line as possible and then we stop hard as well. That way we get a very tight loop. The problem here is with the uranymphing rig is that the flies are so heavy and the tippet diameter that you're using is so thin. Very often if you create that very thin loop, the flies tend to drop down and you get a tailing loop. For that reason, it's very important that when you come back, let's say you've done your drift, that you open your cast a little bit. You do the same thing, you open your cast, you use the weight of the flies to load the rod and then when you come forward, you come in more at an arc and once you stop, you stop abruptly because that will make flies shoot forward very effectively. Another very important factor to practice while you're doing your nymphing is a, a cast called a tuck cast. It's, it's not necessarily a full tuck cast, but it has an element of tuck cast in it. So in a normal cast, you would come forward and you would stop and then you would follow the rod down to, to the water, following the flies down as they land. What I want you to do here is as soon as you stop, you lift the rod slightly. So once you stop, you overpower the forward cast, you stop and you lift the rod slightly. I'm just gonna indicate that again, like that. What that does, is it pivots the flies down and what ends up having happening is that the flies hit the water first and that's what you want 
to happen. So the flies hit the water first and then you can keep the leader off the water so that the flies sink under control but as fast as possible. So after you've made the tuck cast and you've stopped high, the flies land in the water and then what you need to do is retain tension and this is where urine nymphing becomes so hard for some anglers is that tension and a very thin diameter leader and tippet will help you to keep that tension and really feel what's going on at your flies. So once you've made the tuck cast, drop the flies in the water and then just keep tension. And the trick here is to, oh, there was a eat. The trick here is to move the fly line or the, your rod tip slightly quicker than the current. This will make sure that you actually drag the fly slightly faster than the current, so you'll retain tension all the way. In this way, you can detect takes, even the most subtle takes, and you can just set and you're on. On. So this happened while I was trying to illustrate the tuck cast. We hooked into another nice fish. So it just shows you how effective urine nymphing is. I must say I'm super stoked with this fish. And one thing that really helped me to, to get this fish um, is, is not only the, the leader um, and, and the rod, but it is that perfect sort of urine nymphing cast that you're in contact with the flies right from the beginning and that the flies sink down as quickly as possible. And without that, there's no way that I would have caught this fish. So um, yeah, just a textbook sort of urinymphing cast and, and, and drift. And then this was the result. It's an absolute perler of a fish, especially for these streams. It doesn't get much better than that. I hope that you found this review helpful and I'm sure that if you master this and if you practice it, it will help you catch a lot more fish. But this run, for instance, is easy to walk past if you don't get a eat on a typical, a typical dry and dropper rig. The fact that we got the flies down and really fished it effectively meant that we pulled three very nice fish out of here. Also, please subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications. In that way, we can let you know as soon as we release any future videos, tutorials or vlogs. Until next time, cheers.